This video is sponsored by Infineon. By 2030, Apple will be 100% carbon neutral for our entire end-to-end -end footprint. Today, I'm proud to announce that we intend to become the first major company to operate carbon-free. Now, we said in January that we'll be carbon negative as a company by the year 2030. We've heard so many tech companies at this point talk about how they're gonna be carbon neutral by whatever year. But I don't know about you guys, I've always kind of wondered how they plan to do that. Like, not just talk about it, what are the actual actions they're going to do to reach those goals? And also, what exactly is decarbonization anyway? Well, I met with people at Infineon at their annual October Tech event. They're a very popular German-based silicon manufacturer, by the way. It was fun. But they're one such company making huge progress already in reaching their goal to be carbon neutral by 2030, which is not that far away. That's a little scary. Anyway, we talked about what they and other companies are actually going to have to do about those goals. First, we need to talk about something that I think is often misunderstood. Bear with me, but the law of conservation of mass states that matter, as in everything that we can see in the world, cannot be created or destroyed. It can only change form. It's what's called a closed system. The water cycle you may have learned about in school shows how water goes from the atmosphere to rain and then works its way through rivers and groundwater to the ocean, which, as it's heated by the sun, the water evaporates back up into the atmosphere to become clouds, accumulates to become rain again, to start the cycle over. And it's that way for every element of matter. There are molecules that were around when the dinosaurs were here millions of years ago that are still around in some form today. You might even have molecules in you that were from a T-Rex. Well, carbon has a similar cycle, and it moves from one storage device to another through a variety of mechanisms. An example is how a plant pulls carbon from the atmosphere and then converts it into sugar with the help of water molecules. An animal might eat the plant, and the carbon is absorbed into them. Then, let's say the animal dies, its carbon is then converted back into the soil and the air via decomposer organisms, and the cycle continues. Now, carbon isn't the most abundant element in our atmosphere, but the reason we hear about it when it comes to climate change is because of the fact that it greatly regulates the heat of the planet by trapping the planet's heat inside the atmosphere instead of it naturally leaving which is why it and a few other elements are called greenhouse gases, like how a greenhouse controls the temperature for the plants inside. So all of that is to say that when we're talking about decarbonization, we're talking about keeping a certain amount of that carbon in the closed system out of the atmosphere where we as humans have unnaturally put it and kind of unbalanced the system. So how bad is it? Well, as mentioned, there is a natural cycle. And thanks to scientists finding air bubbles trapped in ice core samples, we can see that the amount of carbon in the atmosphere has gone up and down between 160 ppm, or parts per million, which coincides with the ice age, and 300 ppm over the last 800,000 years. Right now, we're here, as of the 2021 average, 414.7 ppm. The last time we had this much carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, it was the Pliocene Warm Period, as it's aptly called, which was about 3 million years ago when the global surface temperatures were 4.5 to 7.2 degrees Fahrenheit higher and sea levels were 16 to 82 feet higher than they were in 1900. Now the carbon in the atmosphere has to stay that way for a bit to slowly watch the temperature rise. And most of us won't see the sea level changes right away. But ask the people of the Marshall Islands, a country in the Pacific Ocean comprised of coral atolls with an average sea level of just six feet. They are actually experiencing flooding already. And if the sea level rises another three feet, 40% of the buildings in the capital city of Majuro will be permanently submerged. And it wouldn't be too much longer for the entire nation to disappear. So I'm sure you've heard enough about such similar dangers. So let's move on to what all this has to do with big tech companies. So large companies are some of the biggest sources of carbon dioxide getting into the atmosphere traditionally, either directly or indirectly. But thankfully, some of them are starting to take notice and they're starting to try to do something about it. 
The big first step to that is to become carbon neutral, or having your company's carbon emissions negated by either reducing them or offsetting them by removing carbon from the atmosphere somewhere else. Now, a lot of companies are trying to achieve carbon neutrality by using something called a carbon exchange. These are marketplaces, essentially, where a company can spend money to buy carbon tokens, which equate to specific amounts of carbon being removed from the atmosphere. The idea here is that ABC Corporation knows that they emit, let's say, 200 tons of carbon into the atmosphere from their operations, and so they can buy tokens that equal removing 200 tons of carbon, and a tree planting organization might get that money and plant enough trees to negate their carbon. And while that's better than nothing, the issue with this is that a lot of these exchanges aren't very accurate, and they don't really check to see when those trees were planted, if they were planted at all, etc. But it's a lot easier than reducing your own company's emissions, and again, it's at least a good first step. Now the better thing to do, albeit much harder, is to try to get your company to net zero, which means reducing your own emissions for all of your operations and everything to nothing. Now there's a pretty well-defined and more importantly measurable system in place that at least 92% of the Fortune 500 companies, including Infineon, either use directly or indirectly to help with this goal called the Greenhouse Gas Protocol. This set of standards and guidance helps companies measure, manage, and report greenhouse gas emissions from their operations and supply chains. And it does this in three different scopes or levels. Scope one is emissions from fuel burned in owned or controlled assets. So think buildings, vehicles, and equipment. Companies need to try and convert all of these sources to renewable energy and limit their CO2 emissions from these places. So Infineon, for example, is on track to reduce their CO2 emissions by 70% by 2025. This even includes scope two, which we'll get to in a sec. But one way that they did this is during 2020, they used resources in their production processes more efficiently than the global average of semiconductor industry per square centimeter of manufactured wafer, including 53% less electricity, 30% less water, and 69% less waste. They also did things like find out ways to reuse their own heat by taking exhaust heat from the processes and using it as heating power in sites in Austria and Germany. Scope two for companies involves emissions from purchased electricity, steam, heat, and cooling in buildings and production processes. So think of these as indirect emissions you create by figuratively keeping the lights on. Another Infineon example of what a company could do for this scope is that Infineon purchases only renewable or green produced energy in Europe and have switched to 100% renewable power as of 2021 there. And recently their Fab 25 in Austin, their largest fab, aka where they manufacture their chipsets, in the United States is now running entirely on green power from local wind farms and by the end of the year all of their US sites will be using renewable power. And then we have scope three. This includes all other indirect emissions associated with a company's upstream and downstream operations, including things like business travel emissions by say, reducing the need for flights, giving employees renewable ways to get to and from work, reducing waste generated in operations and securing green energy waste disposal methods, even emissions from the use of a product or service sold should be reduced as best as possible, and any carbon emitted from the product's end of life when it's no longer useful, so maybe be setting up easy recycling plans for products. An example of this is where you've seen companies like Apple, Microsoft, Samsung, and Google talking about all of the recycled materials in their new hardware. This also, though, would ideally include these companies purchasing goods and services throughout the supply chain only from carbon neutral sources as well as all of the transportation and distribution between these companies and their suppliers and their customers. Now, as a semiconductor company, Infineon has always pushed to make their chipsets more power efficient to have the products that they ultimately go into require less power and therefore contribute less to the carbon in the atmosphere. Again, part of scope three. And when you have the number one position in market share for automotive and power and are shipping billions of semiconductors in each industry per year, that power savings in all of those devices actually is pretty significant. Infineon is also adamant about powering green tech and the semiconductor solutions in these devices have to be even more power efficient in order to get things like wind and solar power on par with conventional power supplies. In 2021, Infineon components contributed to over 160 gigawatts of newly installed clean energy capacity, the equivalent of 375 million solar panels or 16,700 wind turbines, and that avoided 160 million tons of CO2. Now, all of this is just a starting point, and of course, a lot easier said than done. 
But as these companies keep making these promises and actually following through with them, then it encourages other companies to do the same. And hopefully with all of these corporations doing real changes in their operations, it'll help lower the emissions that we have and help us not raise the planet's temperature. And there you go, guys. Thanks again to Infineon for sponsoring this video. If you want to learn more about what they're doing to save the planet, check them out at the link below. Also, hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was a little bit different, clearly. Let me know in the comments below what you guys thought. Always appreciate hearing from you guys. I'm gonna go eat a Stegosaurus now. Mwah! Cut. No, 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 no.